Welcome to the Fire and Earth Podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Groover. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Fire and Earth Podcast. I am your co-host, Kathy Groover. And I'm Jason Mefford. And today, we thought we'd talk about something that um, we've, again, kind of made a little reference to, uh, but thought maybe we'd get a little bit more practical today. And that's about having a daily or what most people end up doing is a morning routine uh, that can help you actually get through your day, get through your week. Uh, because what, what you find a lot of times is if people just get up with enough time to make it to work, they're frazzled, they're stressed out, and they don't ever kind of take that break or take time for themselves. And so a lot of times, especially as adults, you know, and if you have children and other things, sometimes that morning time or, you know, late at night after you put the kids to bed, if you have kids, is kind of the only time where it's just your time, mm-hmm. right? And so I don't, I, I know, Kathy, you said you, off air, you were kind of thinking about morning routine today too. And this kind of popped into my head today because I've, I've tried to develop a much more kind of constant routine in the morning, but obviously along that way, I've done things a little bit differently yeah. as well. So I thought maybe we could kind of talk about that, that, that today. What do you think? I think that's a really good idea. I would have stayed in my robe had I known we were talking about morning routine. <laughs> Well, and it's interesting because I, I have been waking up, normally I'm a 7.30 wake up person, mm-hmm. and for some reason the last month, and I don't know if it's the time, to, I know I have a bird, <laughs> there's a bird, I love waking up to the sound of birds, there is one bird, I don't know what he's after, if he is looking for a mate, he must be the ugliest fucking bird ever, because all, mo- <laughs> tweet, Just squawking. tweet, tweet, and he's slightly off key. Uh, so he's a very awkward bird, and he just does this this tweet. tweet. It drives me crazy, and I want to. I, I've thought about hurting the bird, which I would never hurt an animal, but it wakes me up every morning. So now I've started to wake up between like five thirty and six, which I kind of like um, yeah. because it gives me more time in the morning before I start my day. And I typically don't see clients before ten a.m. anyway because I like to get stuff done in the morning. Yep. And incorporating a lot of what. Oh my God, who was our organizational person? Sarah. Sarah, yeah. Incorporating a lot of stuff that Sarah did, I've been chunking (laughs) into (laughs) reincorporating uh, into 15 minute increments. So it's like I'm working on my next book. So I've been doing that for 15 minutes. I'm working through my Eckhart Tolle program. I've been doing that for 15 minutes. Um, But the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I look at my phone and you're not supposed to. I know. But I'll tell you why I do that. Because if there's something that I need to deal with that I need to get out of bed for, I go, oh, this call for speakers came in. I need to go do that. Or, oh, I need to respond to that email. I go do that. If there's nothing urgent, I put the phone down. I relax. I meditate. I do a body scan. I make sure that I am setting myself up for the day. Then I spend some time outside. If there's something urgent I have to do on the computer, which typically there isn't, there's really very few days where I have to leap out of bed and do work. Um, But I look at my phone specifically for that reason. It helps set up what the next half hour of my morning is going to look like. Yeah. Yeah, And it's it's kind of over time, you end up kind of figuring out what what the right order or other things happen to be as well, right? So we'll kind of go through and share what what I'm doing. And then maybe we can even talk about some of the practical how to if people mm-hmm. wanted to kind of incorporate some of these things as well. So I've always been an early riser. Mm-hmm. So I usually do get up as well between 530 and six um, every day. And, and, you know, for me, a lot of times the, the first thing that I do is, is I get up and I make a cup of coffee and I go outside mm-hmm. right, so that I can kind of smell the fresh air. But what I, what I do at that point is kind of similar to what we talked before about feeding your brain is I want to start my day off. I usually try to not check my phone uh, until 7.30. So I've I've been up for almost two hours. I try not to check it unless I know that something is coming in Mm -hmm. because I don't want it to mess up my morning routine. Because when I've done that before, sometimes then my brain goes off to something else and then I don't end up doing what I wanted to do. Right. So, you know, most of the time the world ain't going to fall apart, you know, before 7.30. At least that's, that's worked for me. Checking your phone first works for you. 
So yeah. again, this is all about just kind of what we're doing, but each of you has to figure out what works for you. Yeah. So I go outside, I sit down with a cup of coffee, and I usually feed my brain um, auditorily, put my headphones in, and oh. I'm either listening to a podcast or listening to a book on tape or something um, while I'm first starting. I'm trying to feed you know, those positive things into my head while I'm, while I'm kind of waking up. And it's also a time usually when, you know, I'll end up getting kind of these bursts of inspiration or other things. So I have a little notepad that I count out there of, of things that I end up having to do during the day. So I'll kind of go through that routine, uh, you know, but, you know, my wife, Allie, is going through her routine, trying to get off to work too. And I want to spend time with her in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I have to kind of time it on, you know, that, that time for me. And then I kind of take a little bit of a break to help her kind of get out get out the door uh -huh. at that point. And so, you know, either, either before that, if I have time or after she leaves, then I usually go into a meditation. And, yes. um, you know, for me, I usually, at least right now I'm doing some guided meditation because there's certain yeah. things that I'm trying to work on. Um, and so go through kind of the same meditation each day, uh, to try to help me kind of, you know, change some of the limiting beliefs and do some of the things that I need to do. Mm -hmm. So once I get through that, here's another kind of funny thing that I do because I love music. I have a little morning playlist that I listen to and there's, there's songs that mean something to me and help me kind of get energized or think about the day. And so I'll listen to that for about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, sometimes at that point, I'll actually kind of check my phone and just see if there has been anything urgent that's come in mm -hmm. um, before I need to. Um, and, and know what it is. And then once I kind of finish that, I go into, I do a morning journaling exercise as well, where I go through, there's certain beliefs that I've, that I've kind of um, written down. I go through, I say them to myself nice. and then I actually physically write them down in my journal um, every day. Once I finish that, then it's time to pull out my little, you know, what am I doing today? And just kind of jot down the three or four things that I need to get done during the day that are most important and prioritize them and then just start jumping into it and going. So um, that's kind of the routine that I, that I go through. Sometimes it's not in exactly that order. Mm -hmm. but that's usually kind of, kind of what I'm doing. So. Wow. You're so much better at this than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I went through this, this phase for a while where I was doing the artist way. I don't know if you ever worked through the artist way where mm -hmm. they have you do these morning pages where you have to write three pages stream of consciousness, a story, how, what you dreamt about, whatever. And I did that for the longest time where I would wake up and the first thing I do is grab the journal and write. I haven't done that in years. Um, I never think to listen to music because it's not my thing. Um, I can't tell you the last time I listened to a book or a podcast on, t on CD or MP3 because I don't think to do that. Um, I feed things in the morning. So I've got the cat that keeps popping in uh, from the, you know, another episode, you'll see the cat. But also I have a, a handful of scrub jays who sit on my hand and eat breakfast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they fly, I'm a Disney princess. I don't know if you knew. <laughs> well, I do now that the birds are coming uh, on to you. But they do, I hold the peanuts up and the, right now what's hilarious is none of you can see this, but the bird is outside squawking for food and the cat is inside wondering why there's a bird sitting there. So they're yelling at each other. So this has been phenomenal this morning. Um, but I sit outside, you know, maybe I water the garden or I do a little bit of weeding. I try to get outside in the morning. And it's so funny because my husband was constantly saying, why don't you get outside more? And now I do. Sorry. I, I learn. I'm very slow. Um, the first thing I look at when I turn my computer on is MSN is my homepage and that pops up. I want to see just a little bit of what's happening in the news, um, just to kind of get an update as to what's happening for the day. Sometimes there's a health article I might want to read or uh, some sort of social thing that I, I check out. And then I look at the emails and I start either working on a book or working on a PowerPoint or you know, going through that to-do list. My, it sounds like my morning is much more to-do oriented than yours. <laughs> and there is the cat. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Excuse me. Excuse me. What are you doing? Oh, you... Okay, you're... Okay, hang on. <laughs> moving the camera, too. <laughs> that was the cat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's unscripted. 
<laughs> go do your routine. He has a very specific routine that we talked about off. We're not going to bring up right now. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a little high. He had his catnip. So he's like, wah. <laughs> What was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're talking about the bird. And oh, yeah, the bird. Well, the, the cat's bird. apparently. Well, the bird and getting outside and. Getting outside and actually spending some time in quietness for a while. And I actually tend to do that before I get out of bed. I'm not a jump up and just go person, I, unless I have to from what the phone tells me. But it's like I tend to lay there for a while and just sort of contemplate and daydream and fantasize about what my day is going to look like or set those goals for the future. But mine is much more cerebral. Um, and then I had to work. So, and well, I got first thing I do tea, got to get the tea. I don't do coffee. So I got to get the tea. Yep. And then I eat all morning long. So what's your normal breakfast, Jason? Usually a banana. I don't really eat that much for, for breakfast to begin with. Yeah. So, so usually, you know, I, I do something simple like that, but I think as we've talked before off, off the air, that's probably one thing I need to get better at oh. is actually, um, I tend to just kind of go through my day without even thinking about eating sometimes. I know until I, until I end up having a, a headache or stuff like that. So I, I probably need to incorporate that more into my life um, as well and doing better about that. But again, mm -hmm. part of that's um, just kind of what, what it's been, you know, yeah. before actually, before I'd injured myself, I was, I was going out for a run at least mm -hmm. for an hour every day. Um, that I've kind of stopped that. I need to start incorporating that back in as well. Um, but I think we've talked about on future or past episodes as well, right? I had to make a decision on there's certain mindset things that I'm trying to work on right now. And I felt right. like that was more important right now. I'll get back to the exercise plus the mindset, mm -hmm. but just trying to to make everything work and fit it in the time frame that I have, right. um, that that's, that's what I could kind of do right now. Yeah. And it's interesting. I, I'm an eater. I eat all day. So it's already here as we're recording this, it's 9 17 in the morning. I have already had two eggs, two pieces of bacon and a banana. And when we're done with this recording, I will probably grab something else before I start my day. And then at 1130, I'll eat again. Mm -hmm. And then at one o'clock, I'll eat again. <laughs> and then at Five o'clock, I'll eat again. And then I'll eat after dance class tonight. Um, it's just, that's what I do. I'm a grazer. I will eat all day long. I have snacks hidden. I'm like a squirrel. I have snacks <laughs> hidden everywhere. Like every drawer of my desk has some sort of snack. My bag has a snack. Yeah. Because there's been way too many times where I'm like, I need to eat. Why is there no oh, a snack? You know, so, and they're healthy snacks. They're like energy bars or they sell these little like um, little cheese things. They're, they're wrapped in salami that you just peel and open. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah. I love those things. Those are perfect because I'm a protein person. I'm not a carb person. So I eat protein all day long. But it is that protein that will fuel you for the day. It's those the protein and the fats as opposed to just those carbohydrates. So people that grab a cup of coffee and a donut, you're not going to be fueled for the rest of the day. This is why by 11 o'clock you're crashing and you head for the Mountain Dew or the soda or the coffee or you know the energy drink. Yep. Um, it's about starting the day with that nutrition yeah. and n your brain in that as well. So like you said, you, whoops, you, uh, <laughs> God, I'm a mess over here today <laughs> between the cat and the cords and the pens and I don't know what I'm doing. Um, yeah, but it's important to, to start your day with that energy, with that stimulation. I think. And some people do like, I don't, I'm not a morning exerciser. I'm a nighttime exerciser. And I know, again, you have to do what works for you. If you're training for a marathon, you're probably up every morning running. You're probably not doing that at eight o'clock at night. So yeah. it depends on what works for you. Well, and that's, and that's why, I mean, it, we've kind of gone through and shared a little bit about kind of what our morning routines are, uh, you know, and so now maybe we can give some tips for, you know, helping people kind of come up with what works for them. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, again, everybody's schedule is different. Your, your family or life, you know, um, obligations might be different. You know, again, if you throw kids or oh. parents or other people into the mix that you're caring for as well, mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to a job, you know, that, that you have to be at, you know, and have traffic and other things like that. But this is where maybe we'll try to give some tips for, for things that people can maybe do or think about so that you can start to create your own routine as mm -hmm. well. So, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, what I was going to say, two things that I absolutely recommend is definitely starting out the day with really good nutrition, mm -hmm. making sure you're getting those proteins and fats. So starting your day with a good 
amount of food that's going to fuel you for the rest of the day is vastly important, especially if you have a long commute. Uh, because sitting in that car for an hour, hour and a half, sitting on a train, sitting on a ferry, sitting on a whatever, you're going to want to make sure you have the energy and the nutrients that you need. And the other thing is I really recommend you touch in with yourself. You tune in with your body, do a body scan, do a quick meditation, see how you are feeling. Because then when something starts to go awry, if something goes awry, then you know, as opposed to, huh, I don't know how long my shoulder hurt or how long has that weird spot been there? You know, if you don't know yourself, and we've talked about this so many times, I actually have a sign that is the Greek know yourself above the door to my bedroom because that's what was hung above the um, Oracle of Delphi. It's about mm-hmm. knowing yourself. And mm-hmm. so I, every day, I try to do my best. Every day I check in with myself to see how I'm feeling physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, what's happening. Because then if something changes, you'll notice. Yeah. So those are the two things I really recommend. Breathing, kind of taking that pause in the morning. Even if you have to jump right in and get on the computer or do work, take the kids to school, get them dressed. Stopping for 10 seconds and breathing, we all have 10 seconds. So food and checking in are my two things. Yeah, because that's the thing. You know, you can, um, uh, you know, again, not everybody has time to sit down and meditate for 40, you know, 30 or 45 minutes. I get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, but even, you know, the more, the more you do, the, the more effect it has, but mm-hmm. even just that breathing for a minute is, makes a big difference because a lot of times we don't actually pause at all during the day. And, and, and those, those flashes of inspiration and other things are going to come when you actually stop and just sit with yourself in the present moment for a few, few minutes yeah. Um, is where it is. Now, you know, I get that people are busy. And, and so, you know, some of the other stuff, like we talked about, you know, having to go to work, right? Well, you can make choices, uh, you know, just like we were t- you were talking about food, right? You can make mm-hmm. the choice between having a higher protein, you know, breakfast, maybe with eggs or things like that, or you can do the donut. Those are choices that you have to make, right? Mm-hmm. And so, Think about that in, in some of the other ways, because, you know, one of the areas that adds a lot of stress to people's life is commuting to, to and from work, because they're either, you know, like you said, you got to, you know, grab the bus, the train, get in your car, fight traffic on the freeway, whatever it happens uh-huh. to be. Well, while you're in that space, of, we'll just pretend you're in your car because I'm guessing most people probably commute with, to work from in a car, yeah. you have a choice of what you're going to consume as you are driving and how you are going to feel as you are driving. So you can have the equivalent of eating a donut in your car, or you can have a higher protein type experience, right? That's why I love podcasts and audio books and other things like that. I do like to listen to music and listen to the radio. Uh, but I've tried to fit as much other stuff to help feed my brain and help me to learn and grow yeah. into what I'm doing. So, so take what normally is a stressful uh, environment, and sometimes people might listen to talk radio or the news or other things, and most of the time that's just trying to get you scared and get you amped up. Yeah. So if you're listening to that and fighting traffic, how do you think you're going to feel when you get to work? You're going to be stressed cool. out, amped up. You're not going to be feeling good. Mm-hmm. If instead, if you switch that out for something that's actually helping you learn and develop or relax, you're going to get to work feeling much better. And so you've yeah. effectively replaced a donut for breakfast with something that's a higher protein type item. Yeah. And I do so much driving to LA. I'm in Santa Barbara. So it's almost a two hour drive when I go down to do trapeze. And so often I will put on, I guess when I said I don't listen to books on tape, I suppose that's kind of a lie because I have a bunch of Eckhart Tolle lectures uh, that I listen to occasionally. And I will put one of those in and typically it's, you know, four or five different CDs and they'll just keep cycling through. So by the time I get down to the trapeze rig, they comment on, oh my God, you look so relaxed. You look so happy today. I basically meditated for the last two hours. Yeah. You know, listening to him talk about presence and doing that in the car, it keeps me from getting upset because we choose how we respond to these things. These external things are going to happen all the time. The external thing isn't the problem. It's how we decide to respond or react to it. So listening to something in the car or on the train, I have, I have clients who live over on Bainbridge Island outside of Seattle. Mm-hmm. And when they commute, it's a ferry, a bus and then a ferry. And, ferry and, the sea. and they love that commute because on the ferry, you're reading a newspaper, you're having your cup of coffee, you're enjoying the outside, you're talking to friends. They have, you know, bus buddies and ferry friends is what they say. <laughs> um, 
And so they get to hang out with these people that they like. Whereas, you know, us in Los Angeles and California, it, it tends to be so isolated. We are in our car, period. Whereas yeah. back east, there's so many people on subways and trains and interacting with each other. So it's just, it's a different lifestyle, but you have to pick what works for you. You have to pick what, and every day might be different. And when I was in New York City last year for a conference, I ended up rooming with Victoria, mm-hmm. who did our um, hypnosis sort of um, visualization manifestation episode. She yep. and I were roomies. And every morning, her alarm would go off earlier than I would have liked it to. And she would meditate for 15 minutes mm-hmm. every morning. While she was meditating, I'd make her a cup of coffee. Now, I don't drink coffee. But it was actually fun for me to kind of get up and do the machine and make her coffee. And, you know, and so when she was done with her meditation, I'd hand her her cup of coffee. Um, that became our morning routine for those three mornings we were together. But I really admire, I was thinking about that this morning. It's like she, medita- she, just, she meditated every morning. She would not get out of bed and she'd sit up and she'd prop the pillows up behind and she'd meditate. And I thought, you know, I need to start incorporating something like that. So well, she'd actually do it in bed. Yep. Yeah. She would okay. Simply, well, I don't know what she would do at home, but we we're in a hotel room. So where's she going to go? But yeah. yeah, no, she would, you know, sit up in bed and prop herself against the headboard and she would meditate at her little ding timer for 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. She would meditate every morning. Yeah. Well, and so it's about, you know, I mean, as we've been talking about this, you know, hopefully all of you that are listening are starting to think about what does your normal morning routine look like? You know, when you show up at work or wherever you're at, how do you normally feel? And what are some little things that you could do to maybe change that? And again, this is not, we're not, you know, I've been, (laughs) the little morning routine that I kind of went through and shared with you at the beginning of the episode, it's taken me six months or a year to, to, to get, to get it kind of down to something that actually works for me and, and to actually stay in the habit of doing it. Right. And I, I have a little checklist. It's around here somewhere that I have like those five or six little things that I try to do every day. And one of those is actually play my guitar as well. Nice. So during the day, I, I like to pick it up now the last few weeks. I haven't picked it up every day, but I'm tracking and I have a little checkbox every day mm-hmm. to know whether or not I've done it. Yep. And so again, you know, on something like the meditation, because that has become a big priority for me because of some things I'm trying to work through. I have meditated every single day for probably, it's been months. Good for right? you. Um, and so that's, that's just one little thing. And like I said, now that I've worked that through and I'm kind of doing that consistently, I have built that little habit. I have figured out the best time in my day when uh-huh. that fits. Now I can move on to something else, right? So if I'm, if I'm, lacking in another little area. Now I can start developing that because that's how any of this stuff happens is it's just a little bit at a time. And so don't yeah. feel, don't feel overwhelmed. Like, Oh crap. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're going to meditate and eat and journal and feed the birds and do all this stuff at time. Stupid, take the, yeah. Feed the bird and do all this stuff. No, but just, just pick one thing uh-huh. that you want to do different and just start start with that, start small. And, you know, even if it's just for a minute or two, um, but starting that kind of habit, because habits are good. Yes. Good habits. Yes. And reward yourself. And I have a client who, uh, remember how cool it was when we got stickers in school? Like they'd have the board up and like you got a little shiny sticker for little, I remember the different colored stars they'd put on for various things. But I have a client who her exercise is she walks. And every day that she walks, she gets to pick out a sticker and put it on her calendar. And she loves that one, that visual of looking at the calendar at the end of the month and going, oh my God, I walked 12 days. And she has hundreds of different kinds of stickers. She has like stickers for holidays, stickers for seasons, just stickers she likes. And so she actually takes pleasure in that ritual of which, oh, I'll get the kitty today. And she sticks it on her calendar. So if it takes that sort of um, motivation to get you going because we love we love being rewarded for things even as adults it's like to look at the calendar and see those stickers it's yeah. kind of a fun thing for her so pick whatever's going to work for you to motivate you and getting to I'm going to wake up every morning and meditate that's what I'm going to do because I haven't been I teach it and haven't been incorporating it enough into my life um, so in thinking about morning routines this morning ironically of course we know that we're on the same page <laughs> with this stuff um, it's time for for me to incorporate that. So I'm going to shift my morning routine a little bit and I'll keep you posted as to how it goes. Yeah. Well, and like you said, I mean, already 
you know, for whatever reason, like you said, instead of normally getting up at 730, you're getting up at 530 quarter to six. And so, you know, because of that, because yeah, because of the damn bird, now you have more time yeah. in, in your morning that you can actually help incorporate some of these things. So you know, the reality is, you know, for some of you, you may have to set your alarm a little bit earlier or, or may have to, you know, like we talked about with productivity chunk or try to shrink down certain things so that, you know, instead of something that normally you just kind of do leisurely and maybe take uh-huh. you know, 20 minutes to do that you could do in 10 minutes, well yeah. do it in 10 minutes and use that other 10 minutes for something else. Because, you know, again, the more you feed good stuff into your brain, the more you develop these positive habits, yeah. it ends up showing up in other places in your life. Absolutely. I, mean, I, I feel so much more calm and relaxed even when things may be crazy around me. And I know it's because of that morning routine, yeah. right? I know that some of the limiting beliefs that I've had that have been holding me back in my life are going away. Why? Because I'm journaling my beliefs mm-hmm. every morning. And I yeah. know that I can see that I feel different about myself mm-hmm. and anybody else can as well. And it's not just, you know, we're talking about the stuff here, but if you, if you listen to other people, you're going to hear them saying some of these same things. Yeah. Having a good morning routine. Cause this was the other thing that, you know, I've, I've done some different things with Brian Tracy over the years. I wrote mm-hmm. a book with them. I've, I've done some coaching stuff with them. Um, and I have a huge amount of respect for that man. Yeah. And, and I, and I watched cause one of my friends just did a documentary on him. Oh, and cool. so I went back and actually watched the documentary. And, and one of the things that Brian said in there, uh, in, in one of the clips from a speech that he'd given before is he said, you know, rich people get up before six o'clock. Mm-hmm. Poor people get up with just enough time to make it to work. Yeah. And, and again, that kind of hit me like, I mean, and again, I've always been a morning person, but to yeah. me, the biggest takeaway there is, is not even necessarily the time, but the fact that people that are more successful get up a little bit earlier. And what do you think they do with that time? They're doing those good things yeah. that help them to be more successful. And so if we don't take some of that time, it's going to be hard to break out and really unlock your full potential yeah. if you're just, you know, kind of running from place to place. Right. I completely agree. And we need, we'll, we'll get you eating better. <laughs> yeah. I need to work on that. I need to work yeah. on that. And I need to work on, you know, getting back into actually exercising mm. at least three times a week, even if I just go out and walk. Yeah, put a sticker on your calendar. Uh, put a sticker on my calendar. Check mark Yay. on my little thing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Oh, so go out, go for it. Start your day the right way, just like you will with your nutrition. You have to nourish your brain and your spirit and your mental and your body how to nourish everything. So go out and do that. Start that thing. Let us know what you're going to change in your routine. Leave it in the comments and let us know what your morning routine tip is. And that'll help everybody else because this is a, this is sort of a little commune of learning here at uh, Fire and Earth Podcast. So um, go forth, be well. I'm Kathy Groover. I can be reached at kathygroover.com. And I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. And we will see you on a future episode of the Fire and Earth Podcast. Take care and have a great rest of your day. Bye.